Hello guys, it's Mad and welcome to another Is It Worth the Gold episode and today we're going to be looking at something that really doesn't need any introduction whatsoever. The infamous Type 59, yes we finally have it on console. So we're just going to have a look around the bundles and we'll have a look in the garage and a little bit of gameplay. So I'm quite happy about how they've priced up these bundles. Um, they were under no sort of obligation whatsoever to put this bundle in. 7,850 gold, you got the Type 59, a garage slot, the ASOP which gives you some money and a premium day, and some premium shelves. So, that's not bad at all, really, you can't um, complain about that. I mean, when I bought the 112, I bought it from the Tech Tree, and it cost me over 12,000. And already, uh, I don't have no real need to play the 112 anymore, now I have this tank, so... In terms of value for money, I could have saved myself a lot of silver and just waited and bought this. Anyway, so up to the loaded bundle. This time you get a million silver, seven days of premium, and your ATOP. So for what's that, 8,000, for a little bit of gold, about 2,000 gold nearly, you're getting a million silver and seven days of premium time. That's up to you whether that sort of amount of gold is valuable. Um, that in terms of value, whether getting a million silver in seven days premium is worth nearly 2,000 gold to you. So that's totally for you to decide. Or you can go for the Type 59 fully loaded and this time it comes with three pieces of equipment and two million silver in seven days of premium time. So although it's 11,500 gold, you are getting three pieces of equipment, two million silver, which is very handy, especially for someone like me who's always looking for silver to buy something. Yeah, and seven days of premium. Um, all for the less than what my 112 cost me. So although I went for this one because it was the cheapest and I got a Type 59 for as cheap as possible, if you do have the gold floating around and you have no silver for equipment, um, if you buy this one, you can have all the equipment you need for the tank and plenty of silver afterwards to buy with whatever you want anyway. So for in terms of value for money, um, I'd either go for the very cheapest or for the most expensive, depending on your own um, sort of financial situation. Yeah, so not bad at all at the start. Right, so here it is, Type 59, Tier 8 Chinese Premium Medium Tank. So uh, everyone's probably heard about this tank before, uh, it's the infamous T Type 59. When it first got brought in on PC it was horrendously overpowered and uh, they nerfed it a few times but it's still a good tank and I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do now is bring up the stats and go into my PC um, knowledge base bring up the Type 59 for the current PC stats and see what the differences are. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm in Russia, not China. Right, Type 59. Bring up the stats now. So pen is the same as ours. APCR pen is the same as ours, and uh, all the penetration and alpha damage is the same as the current PC version. What else do we want to look at? We're mainly um, looking at um, rate of fire 6.9, so that's the same as the PC have at the minute. Uh, where's aim time 2.9, so that's exactly the same. And accuracy on PC is actually 0.39, uh, so we have currently have 0 0.01 better accuracy. But this, our console version, is still not a pre-nerf Type 59. There's a lot of hidden stats um, that you can't see on here that got nerfed quite heavily. There's no way they gave us the full unnerfed Type 59. But, um, from playing the couple of games I have, it is still probably going to be the best Tier 8 premium tank in the game. Anyway, so the rest of the stats, engine power 520, not a huge amount. It does get around uphill, it's pretty slow. The gun stats, although a lot of them sound quite bad, uh, in reality, this tank plays really, really well. Rate of fire is 6.9 rounds a minute. That's a little low compared to something like a Panther 88. But what you have, the Panther hat doesn't have, is a turret that can bounce pretty much everything. Um, so the Panther 88, trying to use that rate of fire isn't as easy 
because you're going to take fire in return. So anyway, penetration with standard AP rounds is 181 with 250 alpha. The alpha is nice over the pan for 88 because of the 88mm gun. doesn't have quite as much alpha as a 100mm gun. Premium pen is pretty good at 241 and this time I was quite surprised to find out um, by playing the game. Uh, it's APCR. I much prefer APCR over heat. It's a lot easier to use and you can use APCR for tracking shots and also get damage done as well. And alpha is the same. HE pen is low but who cares. Aim time is shocking at 2.9 and accuracy isn't amazing at 0.38 but in reality with some equipment and if you get this tank hold down which is the best way to play it you don't need to move much between shots anyway um, as long as you've got your positioning of your tank correct and the rest of the time um, you should be side by side with a tank using your turret to side hug and the stats like that really make no difference anyway track traverse is very good at 46 degrees a second and then on to the turret and this is where this tank becomes pretty legendary the front of the turret is 200 millimeters thick the sides 130 and the back's pretty crappy but who cares turret traverse is 46 as well so that much is track traverse not bad at all view range is an acceptable 380 meters uh, we'll talk about my equipment in a minute but I went for it, it seemed to work uh, but I don't have any particularly skilled Chinese crews so if you do you may wish to uh, run some different equipment anyway so that's about all you need to know let's have a quick look at the other stats 1300 hit points not massive uh, but this tank does have the ability to bounce but some of the other premiums don't so it's not a massive uh, problem speed limit of 36 kilometers an hour it will get there but not uphill not even on a slight gradient um, the engine power is not good enough and the rest of the stats we've looked there so onto the armor profile the whole 100 mil front plate uh, it's obviously not the lower plate that is good enough when angled to bounce lower tier tanks fairly reliably and some some equal tier tanks but you must be very careful about your hold down positioning and trying to get that 200mm of frontal turret armour into use and if you can master that this tank is going to be a breeze and you're going to earn some serious silver in it side of the hull is also 80 so side scraping is a possibility uh, but be careful about what angle you use and who you do it against and the back of the hull is quite weak but who cares about that anyway so onto my equipment that I chose and it seemed to work I went with the bog standard medium tank equipment coasted optics because the base view range is 380 if it was more I would more than likely have gone for gun lane drive to complement the vert stabs because of the aim time. But as it is, I went for coated optics, the rammer, because the DPM is quite low, and rammer brings it up, and the vert stab mark one, uh, just to help with uh, stopping the aiming circle bloom so much if you do need to move in between shots. Anyway, and that worked pretty well for me. Right, there we go, that's it, fellas. Um, other than one point, possibly. You may wish to ditch off the fire extinguisher and go for whatever the Chinese use for their Primo stuff, improved combat rations. Um, that will help with your reload and also your aim time, but a uh, shot to the lower plate does damage your engine. So uh, be a little bit careful about having combat ration fires, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Right, on to some gameplay. I bought this tank Friday, but I was still so bloody ill, I did not even attempt to play it. So, about half an hour ago, I sat down to uh, play quite a few games in this to get you a replay worth showing you. Um, but because Type 59, I'll show you my stats right now. I played two games. Got 11 medals and 11 kills. So yeah, um, Type 59. Anyway, on to some gameplay. Right, here we go then, tankers, type 59. Uh, this replay actually starts off pretty slow and just gets better as it goes on. So bear with it for a while. The action that happens later on is uh, well worth a watch anyway. So I'm pushing forward. We've got Bulldog pushing forward. I was expecting to see loads of spots in the middle of the map. We normally do on this map, but uh, yeah, it didn't quite happen. Uh, they played a little bit differently. 
So what you see me do now is trying to eye up where I think the tanks are going to get spotted. And I'm trying to just find a position where my aiming reticle is just over a piece of cover, meaning I am hold down. So any shots that come in should just ricochet off my turret. But nothing gets spotted. But I'm, yeah, you should make the effort anyway, just in case. You should always try and keep your weakest armour covered up as much as possible. Ready to fire on target. Camp 88 rushes in, but oh, that was completely my fault. That shot didn't give it enough lead. He was moving a little bit too fast. Loaded and ready. You see, in between shots, if you move, there we go, there's that aim time. If you move too much, uh, pick up a kill there, nice. If you turn your hull, turn your turret, you get um, aim and circle gloom, which is actually quite bad on this tank. And with the aim pass time of 2.9 and the accuracy, uh, yeah, you need to try and keep that as low as possible, meaning you should find a hold down position. Try and stay there and get as off as many shots as you can um, without moving too much. And that's the key to getting your shots off as quick as possible in this tank. So nothing doing there, so I'm just going to push straight into their base. I was up to a fair lick of speed there, but I uh, hit a bit of rough cover and it slowed me right down and we ended up doing the exact same speed as that Tiger 2. And that is down to the engine power. Enemies Type 59. He is not hold down and you can see just how easy it is. Uh, standard rounds. Went straight through his hull. I mean, yeah, you can see now it's slow uphill, but it's not sort of end of the world slow. You do get to where you want to go in the end. And considering you are carrying around sort of heavy tank levels of turret armour, uh, it's not that slow really. Right, so we spy a Black Prince. There's already a Type 59 going in on him, so I'm going to join him. Lock on, far on the move. Type 59 is going around. I am going to ram the guy. Pick up a little bit more damage and the kill shot. Ready to fire on target. Now we spy some targets just off to the other side of their cap there. I stupidly let that one go without aiming in. The reload time is actually quite long, so that was a bit of a waste of shot. Zero, I'm um, just trying to stay hold down. And there we go, the Ferdinand puts a nice shot in to my turret there. That was a very, very lucky shot. He must have hit completely square on. There's only one sort of area where Tier 8 tank destroyers um, have enough penetration to uh, bash through. And he managed to find it there. Yep, finish off the VKD. Still trying to stay hold down. shot on the third and it bounces so I swap to the premium ammunition on this tank which is APCR. So my hold down position here is a little bit better now. As long as you're just aiming over the cover, you pretty much guarantee you've got your hold hidden. Anyway let that shot go and it misses. So I'm just gonna push on in. And this is where it starts to get good. Here we go, these boys are trying to hold the corner. Now the Type 59 is on low health. I push in. Ferdinand knows what I'm going to do, but it's too late. He does not have the track traverse to uh, keep up with me. Well, I'll let that one go, switch back to standard rounds, save some money. Don't need premium rounds for the side and rear of Ferdinand. Unfortunately, the uh, Ferdinand blows the, other, <laughs> blows the head off the other Type 59 there. But we take down the kill. IS rushes off, we finish him off. And here comes the IS's buddies. KV3 on his way in. It's low plate on the move. Bounce a shot from him, go around the side of him. 
does take my tracks off. Uh, but I'm going to reload way before his turret comes around. And we kill him as well. Alright, so there's another one of their bodies. Another tier 7 heavy. A tiger. Make a bit of a mistake here. I take a hit there and get tracked. He was very lucky to do that on the move. Get another one into him. And he rams me. Tracks come back on. He's not going to damage me now. But he breaks my gun. Get another one in. Just hustling. Unless he goes for my lower front plate. Um, he's not going to kill me. And there we go. Team cap out for the win. Quite a fast paced game there. Um, just highlighting just how how good this tank is really. Pick up a high calibre. Only a mastery do. Because this tank is OP. And OP players playing an OP tank. Have made this uh, going to be one very hard tank to master now. Um, should have played it on the first day it came out. So anyway, decent amount of base experience, 3,500 damage and a top gun. And you can see second place on our team was also a Type 59. And first place on the enemy team was a Type 59. Well, there we go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we had a quick look around the tank, seeing the prices of the gold. So what is the question in this video? Is it worth the gold? Well, hell yes. Type 59 is OP. If you can afford it, go get one. Um, tier 8 lobbies are going to be plagued by these things so the only way to fight fair is to have a type 59 yourself and go and earn loads of silver with it to buy up all the other tanks you require well there we go guys hope you enjoyed it give it a like if you did and I will catch you next time see you later